Well, here we go with a theorem for proving triangles similar. First, we had angle-angle. Now we have side-side-side similarity. Don't forget the tilde. So we're going to prove that this red triangle is similar, not congruent to, the blue one. And that is uh, that the corresponding sides are proportional. So this is really done very easily. Now, I gave you an easy example here. Let's just put all the sides, the red sides, uh, in proportion with the corresponding blue sides. And in each case, you can see 6 is to 4, as 12 is to 8, as 9 is to 6. With a little bit of arithmetic, you could simplify each of those uh, ratios in this extended proportion, each of them into the ratio 3 to 2. So that's easy. But you say, well, wait a minute, Mr. Banish, what if these are not such easy numbers, 7 and 11? Well, you could do this. The fastest way to test, let's pretend these are more difficult numbers, 6 divided by 4 equals, and you get a certain decimal. We represent each ratio as a decimal. 12 divided by 8 equals, same decimal. 9 divided by 6 equals, and in each case, you've actually just done the division three times, and you achieve the same decimal. That is the scale factor represented as a decimal, and um, that means you got a match. So that's the that's the quick way you can always do it. Now, again, easy ones like this, you can just simplify them all to a common fraction. All right, let's do some exercises. Well, let's do an example of this side 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 similarity. I've got the three corresponding sides color-coded for you, blue, orange, and magenta. And what you need to do is just well, find a common factor. If you look at it this way, we could just divide out 5 over 5, 8 over 8, divide out the 10s here. And in each case, we're going to be left with this ratio, which is the scale factor, 2 to 5. Now, if we had just divided 10 divided by 25, 16 divided by 40, we would have come up with the decimal point 0.4 or 40% scale factor either way. Well, I'm going to do a quick comparison here. Again, I'm starting with this green triangle. I want to see if it's similar to the red one and or the blue one. Well, let's compare the green and the red. So, there's my extended ratio. I've got these sides in order 16 to the 20, etc., all the way around. And this time, instead of dividing, let's just turn them into similar fractions. I can do that really quickly here. Um, the first ratio, um, 16 over 20, divide out the 4s. And the one on the far right, divide out the 5s. The one in the middle, I multiplied. I doubled the numerator and denominator. Now I have whole numbers, and I can recognize that factor of 7 and how quick I can do that. And what do you know? All three of those are in the same proportion. That sounds like we've got two similar triangles. But we might as well check. Maybe we have three similar ones. So let's check the green against the blue. And there you go. That's the corresponding side setup. Same thing. I can divide out some common factors here. 12 over 16 is 4 to 3. 20 over 16 is 5 to 4. Divide out the 4s. We're already in a bad way because this, the first and the last uh, fraction don't work. They're not equal. Um, I did the same trick. I doubled, I doubled the 10 and a half and the 14. Now I recognize the factor of 7. And I simplify. I've got, well, I've got two pairs of, of proportional sides, but the third is in a different proportion. So these two, no good. These two, similar. One diagram, three questions. Make sure you've got this drawn nicely. And here's a key to get started. RS, this vertical line, is perpendicular to two horizontal lines. That makes them parallel. Well, that's key because now you've got a pair of transversals. And you can see right here, alternate interior angles. Alternate interior angles with the two transversals. Now, we were asked for... P and Q. Well, that's really easy. Just add these three up. Have to make add up to 180, and there you go. Well, let's see if we can find three more measures on this somewhat complicated figure. Now, 
remember, we're looking at similarity this way. There's similar figures that are rotated. That's, that may help you visualize this so we can line up our proportions correctly. So let's start with PQ. Where is, where is PQ? Uh, oh yeah, PQ, that's this entire distance. PQ is to 28 as 18 is to 12. Uh, 12. Well, I can simplify 18 over 12, 3 over 2, and then either using similar fractions or cross multiply, no matter how I do it, PQ, that's this length down here, is a length of 42. Now, RN, that would be the altitude of the smaller triangle, I'm sorry, a larger triangle. And it's going to be in the same ratio that's 18 to 12 or 3 to 2. So let's write this down. All right, you see how this is going. This altitude is to this altitude as 18 is to 12. 12, or simplified as 3 is to 2. So I'll save you the mathematics. I'll bore, save you the boring math there. But this is going to be 24. 24 is to 16 as 3 is to 2. One more. NM. Now that's this side. Now we have a ratio of 3 to 2, or another way of saying it, 2 to 3, I guess. So we're going from the big one to the small one. And I guess I'm going to say, this side is to 24 radical 2, as 12 is to 18, or as 3 is to 2. And therefore, my missing side is also going to contain a factor of radical 2. So if this is 24 radical 2, 16 radical 2. Well, three pieces of stained glass. Let's see if any are similar. I've got, um, well, all three are isosceles triangles. This is what I want to do then. I'm just going to compare one leg to the base in each of these and look at that as a ratio. Yeah, got a bad feeling here because I can do that in my head. Whoops, oh, I can do that too. I know that's 6 tenths, 0.6. 4 divided by 7, I got a bad feeling that that number is going to have a lot of decimal places in it. And I can do this 4 divided by 7. Oh yeah. I don't want to write that down. I don't want to, that, that's a mess. So why don't I just do this? It's really only between these two because I can't see this being 0.6 either. So this is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to set this up as a cross product just to compare. 3 times 7, 21. If I double five and a quarter, I get 10 and a half. Double that again, 21. That checks out okay. So these two are your similar triangles. Well, here we go with retirement. Yeehaw! I've got a shuffleboard here. But I want to make this triangle similar to this one. And I'm given BC is to AC as BD is to AE. Well, it's pretty clear I would need the rest of the proportion, the extended proportion, as DC is to EC. Then we're done. Well, I have two figures here. They're made out of each containing one of these orange segments and containing one of these blue segments and this red angle right here. So why don't I just close this one up and make a triangle? Ah. See, if I did that and I attached it there, I would have a triangle. And in this case, yes, it might happen to be congruent to the earlier triangle. But the reason side side angle doesn't work is because I can also put it right there. And right there, it's obeying side side angle. And clearly, these two triangles are not the same. Well, this will be a fun proof, and um, I'll be a little lazy here. I'm just going to say diagram given. I guess I better finish the diagram. I'm given 
a right triangle ABC with a right angle at A. And I'm going to put in the midpoints. There's D, there's E, there's F. And those are the segments making the smaller triangle. Well, this is pretty straightforward because I've got this mid-segment there. So DE is half of AC. Oh, yeah. Well, if that's true, then DF is also half of BC. And as well, EF is going to be half of AB. Now, that's enough to make the two triangles proportional. You see a ratio of the corresponding sides of 2 to 1 of the blue to the red. And therefore, the triangles are similar. And that would be, again, BAC similar to FED. Now, if they are similar, then I could conclude that these two angles, their corresponding angles, are congruent. That's a property of similar figures. Similar figures, um, the sides are proportional, and their corresponding angles are congruent. And then... Well, this is a little weak, but I'm just going to say it's a right angle. Right angles are congruent. And we would, using the theorems in this book, we would need a few more. We normally use this theorem to say if two angles are right angles, they're congruent. Um, we're taking a bit of a step here, but I'll let you get away with it today. So, again, since BAC is a right angle and these two angles are congruent, I will conclude DEF is a right angle.